Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHN Tech, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prevent Windows 10 from installing unwanted apps and games on your computer. So Windows 10 has a feature called Microsoft Consumer Experience, which basically allows Microsoft to put little ads in the form of suggestions on your start menu, and sometimes even on your lock screen, and in toast notifications. But that's not the only thing that Microsoft Consumer Experience does because sometimes it will even install third-party apps and games on your computer without your approval. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. If I open up the Apps and Features Settings page and scroll down the list of things I have installed on my system, I can find an entry for Candy Crush Soda Saga, which is a game that I never installed. It's just there and if I uninstall it, it will probably reappear on the list very shortly. Fortunately, there is something we can do in order to prevent these types of unwanted apps from installing on our system without our approval. And in doing so, we should also get rid of the ads that appear in our operating system. So stay tuned because in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how. Now, Microsoft Consumer Experience is a feature that was added in the 1511 update, but some things have changed after the 1607 update, better known as the anniversary update. So the method you're going to be using in order to get rid of it will depend on what version you're currently running. You can find that out simply by opening the search window and typing about your PC. Once you hit enter, that will open up a new window where you'll be able to see what version of Windows 10 you're currently running. So without further ado, let's first see how to get rid of unwanted apps and ads from Windows 10 built 1511 and then after that, we'll see how to achieve the same thing on systems running the anniversary update. Okay, so you want to click on the search button right here and type in R-E-G-E-D-I-T. So that's going to bring up the registry editor command. Once you find it, simply click on it and now you're inside the registry editor. Now here's somewhat of a cliche warning, but it's always a good thing to emphasize before you do anything in the registry editor. This is a very powerful tool, and if you do something wrong, you can cause harm to your computer. So before you do anything here, first thing that is important to do is to actually export the registry in the state that it's currently in, so that if you do make a mistake and screw something up, you can always go back and fix the problem. And another thing I want to emphasize, which should go without saying, if you're going to work inside the registry editor and you're not quite sure what you're doing, at least make sure that you're following the instructions carefully. Any problems that you might cause will be problems that you only can be responsible for, so nobody else. With that said, let's get to business. So in order to export your registry in its current state, you want to click on computer up here, then you want to click on file and hit export. So right here you can set a location where you want to export the registry. So in my case I'm simply going to save it in my documents. Give it a name, for example the date of the backup. And once you're done with that simply hit save. So now if I go to my documents right here you can see the registry file that I've just exported. So you're going to be following the presented string. First off you're going to want to open up HKEY Local Machine. Then you're going to go down and open up Software. After that, you're going to go down to Policies and open that up as well. Now right here, you're going to want to go just a bit down to Microsoft and open up that key. And finally, you're going to go down to Windows and open that up as well. Now this is the part where we're actually going to do something. Now that we've opened up the Windows key, we're going to right click on it and we're going to say new and then click on key and we're going to name it cloud content. Once you've entered the name, simply hit enter. So now that we have created a new key in the registry, first off we're going to make sure that it is selected. Then on this screen right here, you're going to right click, go to new and then click on DWORD 32-bit value. So it doesn't matter if you're running a 32-bit Windows or a 64-bit Windows. In any case, you're gonna go with the 32-bit value here. So you're gonna click on that and you're gonna name this value Disable Windows Consumer Features. Once you've entered the name, hit enter to apply it. 
And finally, once you've created this value, you want to double click on it and under value data, you want to enter the digit one. After that, simply hit OK. Once you're done with that, you can close the registry editor and the new settings will take effect after you restarted your computer. Okay, so here's how to achieve the same thing on systems running the anniversary update. Just want to click on search and then type in secpol.msc and then simply hit enter. That should open up the local security policy app. Let's just make it a bit bigger so that we can see better. Okay, so on the left hand side, you want to open up application control policies and then down here you want to click on app blocker. On the right hand side, you want to scroll down and click on packaged app rules. Then in an empty space, you want to right click and click on create new rule. Right here, we're going to leave everything as it is and we're going to click on next. Now on the permissions page, under actions, we're going to select deny and under user or group, we're going to leave everyone and then simply hit next. On the publisher page, we want to make sure that use an installed packaged app as reference is checked and then we're going to click on select right here. Okay, so that should open up a new window. Let's just make it a bit bigger so that we can see better. Let's just move this around a bit. Another good thing might be to click on applications so that we can sort them out in alphabetical order. Now let's scroll down and find Windows Spotlight. There it is right there. You want to make sure to put a check in the box next to it and then hit OK. That's going to take you back to the publisher window and right here we simply want to take this slider and move it next to package name. Once you do that, you simply want to hit create and you're done. Now, if you ever decide that you want to remove this rule, you simply go to the same location, right click on the rule and hit delete. It's going to ask you, are you sure that you want to permanently delete the selected rule and then simply make your decision. So there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or simply enjoyed watching it, be sure to leave a like and share it with anyone else you think might find it useful. For more videos in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll do my best to make it up to you. Thanks for watching and as always, stay strong.